to see it then, this historic moment. Mika Hakkinen wins in Japan, he is world champion. And it's happened immediately, this is amazing. So it all comes down to this then, the last day of the 2003 Formula One season. Kimi Raikkonen is nine points behind Michael Schumacher. If Kimi is going to win the title, it'll be the biggest turnover in the 53-year history of the sport. The Japanese Grand Prix begins now! Michael Schumacher has lost his front wing. I don't believe it. We expected drama, but we didn't expect a drama-rama like this. And here goes Michael Schumacher then up the inside and take the corner. Well, he's lining up Panis now. Look at this, diving down the inside and Panis puts up no fight. Rubens Barrichello, win number three of the season then for the young Brazilian. We were all around to see it then, this historic moment when Michael Schumacher became the first six-time World Formula One champion. Myself, I was a little bit messy today. To come back then and, and, and go through the traffic and, and, and fight your way through uh, with all the happenings. Therefore, the feelings yet haven't, haven't sunk in. I mean, uh, I can well feel for the team, but I can't, can't feel for myself at the moment. With two McLarens on the front row, Mansell was down in third spot on the grid. And at the start, the team tactics between Senna and Berger became clear. Berger led down to the first corner. So, while Berger led, Senna concentrated on keeping Mansell down in third place. Down the start-finish straight they came, and leaving his braking very late for turn one on lap ten, Mansell ran wide. It was all over. We've given it a great go, the team's done a fabulous job. I'd like to congratulate Ayrton now on his uh, third World Championship. Yeah, there's always next year, and we'll go to Australia and enjoy Australia. Berger waved the re-crowned champion into the lead. And after a word from McLaren boss Ron Dennis over the radio, Senna pulled aside to let teammate Gerhard Berger take the race. Senna, of course, knowing that the championship title was already his since Mansell's retirement. And he says thank you to Senna. The Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka is the venue for the final and deciding round of the FIA 1998 Formula One World Championship. The drivers are lined up on the grid and Mika is eager to get away, but the start is aborted. Truly is the offender, he'll start at the back. And that's Michael Schumacher. There's a problem. He stalled his engine. He knows the consequences, as does Ferrari boss Luca Di Montezemolo. The track marshal stands in front of Michael Schumacher's car as the grid leads for their second formation lap. Under starter's orders, and Mika Hakkinen takes the initiative, blasting off the grid. Schumacher on the attack, taking position after position off his fellow racers. Michael passes his brother Ralph for seventh on lap four. Michael's now up to sixth and is pressuring Villeneuve for fifth place. He's got the speed out of the corner and passes with ease. Schumacher's right behind Irvine now. And that's his tyre exploding. Surely his race is over. Number one driver Mika Hakkinen comes round to win the Japanese Grand Prix and the Drivers' World Championship in style. The hard work paying off as Mika, McLaren and Mercedes bathe in the glory. A damp track for the start of the Japanese Grand Prix and the field had been held for quite a long time but the flags at the back said they were ready. Senna needed to win this one but he stalled and Berger very nearly took him out. The only reason he was able to get going was because of the incline of the track and rolled it down. Already, Ayrton Senna moved up to eighth place. His meteoric progress through the field was something to behold in the Japanese Grand Prix. Senna had been closing in, carving his way through the field, and he had the march and the leading McLaren in his sights, and then suddenly Ivan Capelli's march engine faltered, and he was out, and Senna was into second place, just two car lengths behind Prost, the leader. As the drizzle came down, Senna was reveling in the conditions, but closing in as Prost got boxed in behind the back markers. Now this is the point where Senna had the World Championships within his grasp and took it with both hands. Senna down the inside, past Prost, and clinching the World Championship in superb fashion. A tremendous moment then for Ayrton Senna as he savoured that feeling of a job perfectly accomplished, his eighth win of the year and the World Championship crown. The rain poured down on the grid of the first ever Japanese Grand Prix with the World Championship balanced on a knife edge. 
At the end of the second lap, Lauda surprised everyone as he pulled into his pit and got out of the car. The conditions, he said, I can see nothing at all. The rain was now beginning to decrease, but as the track was drying, the rain tires were beginning to wear. And then Hunt's front tire gave way under the strain. Both Andretti and Depaye got past, leaving Hunt in third place. The American had won, but the McLaren pits were only concerned with Hunt's third place. So, give me a drink, give me a drink, give me a drink. James. There are very few cars left on the circuit. There's 14 running now. during the race and that means to say that Prost has won the world championship Alain Prost world champion of 1989 that is all over for Adam Senna and it was his own fault because of the slow corner he wasn't past Prost and he went into a gap and Prost had every right to turn into him there to be very honest, I mean, I'm quite happy to, to leave because I think it's, uh, it becomes absolutely impossible to work with Ayrton. I refuse to walk away from the fight. It's my nature to go right to the end, and that's what I'm going to do. Senna asked for the pole position to be changed from the left. His decision, his request rather, was refused. And the result is that Alain Prost, starting from second on the grid, is actually going to have a start advantage. And we are waiting for the start of this 53-lap race. On the left is Ayrton Senna. On the right is Alain Prost. Behind Senna is Mansell. Behind Prost is Berger. The grid is clear. The lights go. Senna sprints away, but Alain Prost takes the lead. It's happened. Alain Prost has taken the advantage. Senna is trying to go through on the inside, and it's happened immediately. This is amazing. Senna goes off at the first corner. Well, that is amazing, but I fear absolutely predictable. Yes, and that makes Ayrton Senna world champion this year. With Prost not finishing the race quite clearly, he's out of his car, stuck in the gravel pit. That, I'm afraid to say, is the end of this year's Drivers' World Championship. Hakkinen has looked surprisingly calm. Schumacher searches for inner strength. The waiting over. Michael swerves right in what is becoming a routine move for the German. But Mika has the advantage and isn't letting go. Heavy showers dampen the circuit around lap 37, just as Hakkinen pits for the second time. Unfortunately, Mika runs straight out to De La Rosa. The Arrows is frustratingly slow through the corners. All the while, Schumacher puts in some extremely swift laps. Lap 40 and Ferrari need to work quick if they want to keep the lead. It's an outstanding stop, the quickest of the race. Having encountered more traffic, Hakkinen has barely come out of turn 18 as Schumacher exits the pit lane. It's been a long time coming, but Ferrari have finally spawned another world champion. The way we did it in, I mean, a fight until the, the last corner, thanks to Mika. Could have done it a bit easier for me. <laughs> uh, it's simply outstanding and, and no words for it to explain it any better. This is the 18th occasion that the championship has gone down to the wire. Villeneuve with everything to gain, Hill with everything to lose. Hill makes a dream getaway. Villeneuve is the one to fluff it and is swamped by Berger, Hakkinen, Schumacher and Irvine. At the end of lap 12, Villeneuve dispenses with Irvine. A couple of laps later, Villeneuve's rear wheel overtakes him and the Williams is pitched off the track. The battle for the title is over. Whatever happens now, Damon Hill is world champion. So Damon Hill finally seals the win in Japan and takes the championship in style. When you've won the championship and a Grand Prix all in one race, it's a hell of a thing, I tell you. Um, I think this is going to take a while to the full impact to, uh, to really hit me. But uh, right now, I, I feel like I'm on a rocket that's just about to take off. For Piquet, this race was crucial. His third world title was tantalizingly close. For Mansell, it was do or die. To keep his title hopes alive, he simply had to win. But it was Friday practice that brought the shock of the weekend and spelled a premature end to the championship battle.
Nigel Mansell was going for pole when, in the curves behind the pits, he lost his Williams Honda. The tremendous impact did the damage. Mansell was in agony in the cockpit. He released the wheel but couldn't get out. As Frank Williams waited anxiously for news in the pits, the marshals attended to Mansell, who was grimacing with pain. And in this thoroughly unsatisfactory and melancholy way, Nelson Piquet became champion. Jensen Button brilliantly wins the Japanese Grand Prix. Close behind him is Fernando Alonso, the new world champion, Sebastian Vettel. Absolutely sensational race. There's Alberto Ascari, Juan Manuel Fangio, Jack Brabham, Alan Prost, Ayrton Senna, Michael Schumacher, Mika Hakkinen and Fernando Alonso are the eight legends who have won back-to-back -back world champion titles. Add to that list Sebastian Vettel, who is the youngest of them all, and I think he very much deserves to join that list of great drivers. The Japanese spectators will again be treated to a championship showdown. Mika Hakkinen knows that all he has to do to win the championship is to win this race, which will mean beating Michael Schumacher. Countdown to the start for the final time this year, and they're off. It's a terrific start for Irvine, blasting past Frentzen and Coulthard, but it's a better one for Hakkinen, who moves into the lead. Reliability problems aren't the Finns' only concern. Michael Schumacher hasn't given up on victory, which is Irvine's only chance of winning the Drivers' Championship now that he's back in fourth, and David Coulthard can feel his McLaren slipping away. Irvine's back up to third, but it's not enough if Hakkinen wins. No such problems for Mika Hakkinen, though, who can almost see the chequered flag. Just one corner to go. The Finn crosses the line to win the race and the driver's title in style. Hey, 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 brilliant. Max Verstappen has taken the chequered flag to win the Japanese Grand Prix. It's a 12th win of the season for Max Verstappen. Meanwhile, Leclerc goes across the rumble strip. Perez tries to get him on the outside of the final corner. Leclerc comes home to take second place ahead of Sergio Perez. Charles Leclerc has been given a five second time penalty. It gives Verstappen a 100 and 13 point lead in the championship with only 112 points to go. Max Verstappen, two-time world champion. Woo!